We're going to have a look at how to create some more 2D lines, arcs, fills, circles in this layout to create our title block, really just for the purposes of practicing with the tools themselves, not really anything else, and how understanding how to interact with them. So one of the first things we might want to do is to understand how to describe or divide up our space. So if I'm looking at this box here, um, I've added little curves on the edges or fillets. So we may not want to use the top line. What I'm going to do is just draw a construction line from the middle of this to the, this other end. Now, if we want to know where the middle of this title block is, when I hover over it, you keep seeing these little slashes appear. That's this part here, and it's a snap guide or a snap point. So what we can choose is to divide a line or anything into half, divisions, percentages, or an actual distance. So currently it's on half, so when I hover over it, it divides it in half. So therefore we've got one division. Now if I was to change that option to divisions, and then go down into the values and change the divisions to four, and hover over that line again, we now see that that divides into four. Four evil <laughs> sorry, four even parts. If I go back into that again and change that to distance, and in this case I want the distance to be 20 millimeters, let's just press escape sometimes if it's not working, then we're going to see it's going to divide that into 20 millimeter halves. Now it's very important which end we start from. So if I was close to this end, you'll see that it ends up with a, the leftover on this side, or if I start from this end, it's going to end up with the leftover on this side. So when we're using distance, of course, there'll be leftovers. When we're using divisions, of course, it'll all be even. So it depends on what you're trying to achieve. So let's just use that division option. And now to use this, what, what do I do? Unfortunately, there's going to be a bit of a difference between the top line and the middle line. We can see that already. So what we could do is use the bottom line or the middle line or one of these outside lines. It depends on what we're trying to divide. Are we trying to divide the whole page or are we trying to divide the fill that we've created? If we're trying to divide the fill, then we probably want to use the middle line. So what I could do is start drawing. So to draw, we've talked about that before, but once I've drawn it, I could also stretch, because I've only drawn halfway. So I could click on the black dot, this allows me to stretch the line. If I hold shift, that'll keep it straight, and then I can wait till I'm hovering over the other line. When the, my pen turns black, I know I'm at the end. Now I could draw the other lines and repeat that process, but that's a bit silly. Instead, the faster way to work would be to drag a copy or drag multiple copies of what I've just done. So I'm going to choose drag multiple copy, I'm going to hover over the middle line, and then I'm going to hover over this other line until those guides come back up again, and then I'm going to click on them. So now I've got a division of four. Now because I chose drag multiple copies, I could just keep going, keep going, keep going indefinitely. I need to press escape to get out of that. Once I've done that, we see that it has highlighted all three lines, the line that I originally drew and the copies, so I could go edit, grouping, group if I wanted to, so that then I could select them all together once I enable the grouping. If I suspend grouping, that means I can select and edit them individually. This is the same process as if I drew a chained line, and it will automatically group my lines, which could then be enabled or suspended. So th that's the biggest difference between a chained line or a multi-line. A multi-line will always just be one object. A chained line will actually be a combination of lots of objects. All right. So we know a little bit more about the line tool. What else could we do? We could use the arc tool. The arc and circle tool is this one here. We see there's three main options, the center point circle, the three point circle or arc, and the tangential. 
let's choose the tangential first. What's that? We could click here, here, and here, and it's going to fit our circle in between those lines. We could do a center point circle where we choose the center point and then choose the end point, and we could either draw a semicircle, a partial, or a full circle based on that. And then finally we have our three point arc which allows us to click a first point, click a midpoint, and click a final point. Now with all of these, once we've drawn them, we can still edit them. Now depending on how I select this arc, it will give me different options for editing. So if I click along the line, I could then choose to increase the radius, but it's keeping the center point the same. I could offset, so that's increasing the radius. Or we could edit that in a different way. We also have move commands down the bottom. I'd recommend that you don't use the move commands here. If you want to move this arc, the way that you should do that is edit, sorry, select, right click, move, move commands, or select, edit, move, move commands. So maybe we want to rotate a copy. I didn't do that right very well. Let's try that again. Select, edit, move, mirror copy is what I wanted to do. We see that that's not quite a full circle, is it? Because the method that I used meant the center point was not in line. So it's more like an ellipse. Do the same thing. Move, mirror, copy. If that's what we wanted to do. So three different methods for drawing arcs and circles. Uh, it all just depends on what you're trying to create. What else could we do? Let's just have a look at one more tool. Down under more, we have this tool called a spline tool. Now the spline tool allows us to create a free form curve. Either as a individual element or we can close it as well. So if we're trying to create organic shapes, a spline line can work very well for that tool. So they're the most basic of our 2D tools. The only one that we've left out that we will need if we're drawing a title block is text. So let's make this size 6, draw a box, and then we can start typing. I'm going to turn on my caps lock, project name. Now we can see that the box is bigger than the text. If we don't like that, we can go into the text settings, click wrap text. That's going to snap the box down to the size. And then even if we change the size or change what we've written, that will stay the same. Now if we choose to grab that and then manipulate it, we could deliberately or accidentally choose it to go into two lines. We could also then do center alignment if that's what we were trying to do or we could turn it back and we can unclick wrap text if we wanted to as well. So that's what we can do and of course once we've created one we don't have to do that process again we could now just go move drag a copy and maybe add site and add all the different things that we need to have to put into our title block. In the next video, we're going to have a look at how to create a logo and put that in here as well, and we'll just be tracing a logo, something that we've dragged and dropped into Archicad.